Let's get started and talk about storage now. Storage is a very integral part of whatever you do. Obviously, you want to retain data for long term access and maybe it could be a legal requirement to record the transaction your application is making. So storage is everywhere. You are storing a file, you are watching a video, you are sending someone a message before they read that may be stored somewhere or even it would be stored in history. So storage is an integral part of whatever we do. I would talk about very basic concept of storage first and then I'll talk about AWS specific concept. So let's first focus on storage types. Uh, I would divide storage into three different categories. I would call them block storage. Then there are sub second type file storage and then object storage. Now it's not a table where we are saying one is better than the other, but they have specific use cases. Sometime it would be beneficial to use block storage. Sometime it would be better to use file or object storage. So we'll try to understand the problem these type of storage solve and then we will relate it to AWS services that how AWS allows you to use these storages in an efficient and easy manner. Let me first talk about the block storage. Let's take an example to understand the type of storage it is. Let's consider you got a piece of land and this boundary is your piece of land. Now you could decide how you want to divide that piece of land and what you want to use in those specific blocks which you have created. Like I may decide, hey, I am going to put garden here and maybe I would have some open space in my property here. I would have a building and then I would keep the space for parking. This is my use case. Somebody else may say, okay, we do not need parking. Open space is sufficient for it. Maybe instead of parking, I would be creating a swimming pool or maybe a shade or maybe a storage space. So it depends. Idea here is that once you have this piece of land, you are allowed to make your own decision to decide what you want to keep on it. Maybe I want one portion to be smaller, another one to be bigger and vice versa. So that gives you the flexibility to create partitions and in those partitions you are able to utilize different type of storages. You can say, hey, I would be using a X type of storage in this partition. I would use Y type of storage into this partition and I would be using a different type of storage into this partition. So flexibility is there. You take a raw storage, partition it as per your requirement and then start storing data on top of it. That is a block storage. A very common example of a block storage you could think of is your laptop hard disk. Most of you are using a laptop or a desktop, but there is a disk on that. On the disk, there is an operating system which allows you to boot your machine. Could be Windows, could be Mac, could be Linux. And probably you may also want to have, not very common nowadays, but initially it used to happen that we would divide the disk into logical space. Maybe I would keep my data into a different partition. Maybe I would keep my logs into different partition. So this is possible. Purely you could divide it logically and keep different type of data or format them with a different file system to keep different type of data inside. That is what we mean by a block storage. It's a very common used storage. We will talk about this, how AWS implements it. Think about second type of storage, file storage as an apartment block. So this is one apartment blueprint I have here. But obviously it would be possible that there is another apartment adjacent to it. Maybe similar exactly in the nature, little bigger, little smaller, it is possible. But apartments are mostly created in a way that that one is adjoining to another apartment. And same thing would happen here too. So this side is like another apartment. Now, if this apartment is owned by me, I am allowed to make some basic changes here. I could say, hey, I want to change the color of this uh, uh, walls. I want to change the carpet, which is there. Maybe I want to have uh, electricity be redone, electric supply to be redone or electric fitting to be redone. I don't like closet here. Maybe I want it to be shifted to storage or maybe I want to break this internal thing and make it a big storage. So those type of changes are allowed. 
but I can't go crazy and say I am going to break this wall and create a door here because that would be interfering with others. So that won't be allowed though you are an owner of the apartment but still you can't create something or can't do something which would affect others. So there are some limitations on what type of operations you can perform here. Giving a computer context. So this is for file storage. In a file storage, the common thing which you would be doing is you would be saving your file. You would create your file, you would share your file, and maybe you want to delete your own file, that is possible. Somebody else may also give you permission to delete their files, but you do not have permission to format the whole storage. This file storage is giving you file level operations which you could perform remotely or from within the operating system of this particular storage, but you do not have the full ownership of the whole file system. You can't partition format this type of storage. Somebody did it for you and you just utilize that file system. So that is a file storage. Third type of storage is called object storage. Now this is something unique. I would give an example here. I am living into London now. Sorry. Let me give you an example here for object storage. So I am living into London and I moved to London from Dubai. I lived in Dubai for four years. And in that period of time, I have accumulated a lot of stuff, which I just don't want to leave. I wanted to bring that stuff to London. But as soon as I landed, I could not have a home where I would put all the stuff. So what I had to do, I had to find a way to keep my, st my stuff into Dubai for a while. And once I got settled in London, I could have asked it to be couriered back to me. Now, I could rent a whole house and keep my stuff there or I could go ahead to some storage unit providers who provide storage units like this and I could store my stuff there. Probably they may also have option that they would charge me based on the boxes I keep or I could go and rent the whole unit from them if my need was like that. This is a easiest example to understand object storage. So this storage allows you to store object. Now question may be coming to your mind. What is an object? I would say it is still a file, but there is additional information with that, which is called metadata. So it is a file with metadata, which you could add to these storages. So that, so, sorry, you could add metadata to these files. So that is what we mean by a object storage. So advantage of object storage is probably I would be paying only for the number of boxes I keep or I would be paying only for the duration I use this unit for keeping my stuff. So it is much convenient for me. Once I have settled into London, I hired a courier company. They have taken all the stuff from Dubai, shipped it, and now I have it all back in my home. So this is what a object storage example it. I'll come back to this in a minute. I would explain how it differs from file and what can be done and what cannot be done on that. Now, one more word which I use may be confusing some of you is metadata. Metadata refers to data about data. That is a common definition. Think about this box. On this box, I could put a sticker and say you are box number 15. You could put another sticker on top of it and you could say this one has all the kitchen stuff inside it. You could put another stuff on that and you could say this belongs to Ashish. So that is the additional information I have added with the data, which is identifying that data uniquely, or maybe it is identifying the purpose of the data or the content of the data. That's what we mean by a metadata associated with an object. So keep this analogy at back of your mind. And now we would talk about the storage types in technical terms. Block storage, unit of transaction is block. 
Now we need to understand how this block storage actually works. So let's say this is your laptop or desktop hard disk. I would write HDD for that hard disk drive. On top of it, you would have an operating system layer. You do not directly go and communicate to hard disk. You talk to an operating system and then operating system would communicate to hard disk. Let's say you have a program here. Let's say you are using MS Word and in MS Word you have created a file. Now MS Word may not know directly how to communicate to hard disk. So what it would do, it would send this request to store the file or read the file or update the file to the operating system. Operating system would then communicate to the underlying hard drive and would then store your data in different chunk of blocks. So maybe this file required 10 blocks to be stored. So operating system would decide on hard disk where these blocks would be stored. You and I do not see blocks directly. We see them as a file, but at the back end, unit of transaction here is a block. So your operating system is taking care of creating things at the block level. If I'm talking about file storage, file storage will be little similar, but instead of you directly communicating to it, what we would have, we would still have some type of storage. So we would have some storage, probably a hard disk, maybe a magnetic disk, maybe a SSD, whatever. And then you would have some network operating system on that or a software which is allowing us to run network file systems on top of it. And probably file storages would be accessed by different nodes. These nodes would be running some client program and that client program would allow to communicate to this network file system system or network file server that would be a better name for it. Now these file clients here would be issuing command to create a file, update a file, modify or read that will be taken care by the network file server here. It would go to the storage and deliver you the file you requested or modify the file you requested. So that is a file storage. Okay. Coming to the last type of storage, which we talked about object. Objects are files with metadata. So I would have a file and now I could add additional information with it. I could say, hey, file, you are having a owner tab or owner metadata. It belongs to someone. Maybe you would have a price associated with you. So somebody has to pay this much money. Or I could say it has a security clearance level required for it. Or I could say, hey, I have to delete this after some time. So all this information can be added as a metadata. So metadata will help you to identify those objects. Plus you can use automation for performing some operations on these objects. So you can identify, I need all the file for the tab for the metadata where delete after that date is below today's date. And I would go ahead and through automation, I would delete everything. So that is the metadata which is allowing us to do. Now, sometimes people confuse metadata with operating system attributes. That is a different story. Let me give an example here that what I mean by operating system attributes and you would probably will understand it much, much better. Now, if I go to some specific files and check their properties, I would find some information like I am right clicking on a, one of the file off screen and I will bring its detail here in a minute. So you could identify that what that file is. So this is a file and I am just right clicking it and going to its properties. I can see information here like created, modify, accessed. I have information here like details. I could see information here like, hey, where it was done, created, when it was content created, date saved, total ending time. All this information is maintained by my operating system. Now this detail is what we refer as operating system information being stored by my application. Instead of that, if I go to properties of a different type of file, this time I am going to a exe file, which is an executable files property. And I could see it's a detail would be little different than what I have seen for a PPT file. Here the details are little different. It says that this was a file created by Microsoft 
Microsoft Corporation. So this is the file system attribute. So don't confuse yourself with file system attributes and metadata. File systems may not give you ability to add extra information. So that can be sometimes challenging to some of the people. So let's say I decide, hey, I want to modify something. And in that modification, I want to add extra information. Like here, I have this file awscli.png. And what if I want to add extra attribute here, which will say whom this belongs to, or it would say what the content of it or when it has to be expired. So that may not be allowed by your operating system, but object storages would allow you to create that metadata information. So hope this thing is clear. Let's talk about the second aspect here, which is examples. So if you are accessing a laptop hard disk, as I said, you are accessing a block storage. You can take that hard disk and say, I would partition it. On the C drive, like in Windows, we call it C drive, I would be creating the or keeping my operating system and the remaining, I would call it D drive and I would be keeping my data here. So that is my block storage. If I'm talking about file storage, most of the time you would connect to file storage like this fashion. So you will have slash slash server name or IP address slash the folder you want to connect to and obviously you would need permission to access folder and you could access it over the network. This is what a file storage would be looking like. If I'm talking about object storages, see the examples here. If you ever used OneDrive or Google Drive or Dropbox, these are all examples of a object storage where you upload something. It is file, could be PowerPoint, could be a video, could be a photo. Those are all being stored as an object here. Now, the next point here is how can you update the object? Now, when I say you, it would depend on who is referred here. Now, block storage, you can directly update the file. So at the end, it is everything is a file. So you would go ahead to your program, open the file and say, hey, I want to delete, modify, whatever. And then you can perform that operation. You would think you are performing the operation, but the request will go to the operating system and it will perform the operation. In file storage, similar thing happens. You can modify that. But object storages are little different. Let me read it out and then I'll explain what I mean by that. You cannot update the object directly. You create a new version of the object and replace the existing one or keep multiple version of the same object. What do I mean by that? Let me give an example by going back to our storage option. See this box unit here. Consider I have some thing to be updated or something to remove from this box or add into this box which is shown here. Probably you can see that the box. Now, there is not enough space inside this storage unit. So what I have to do, I have to get this box out first. I would perform whatever operations I want on that. Maybe I wanted to add something. So I have added extra information, extra stuff inside, and then I have pushed it back into the storage unit. That's what we mean that object cannot be edited directly. You have to get them out, modify and push them back into the storage. That's how you would perform modification. Right. So hope this thing is clear. Storage unit are not designed like if I'm talking about this physical storage units, these are not designed for humans to live. They are designed for stuff to be kept. Maybe some of the storage unit would not have electricity, may not have cooling and heating because it is not designed for like designed to be like a home or an office, but it is designed to a, as a place to be keeping the stuff. So that we mean by a storage unit. So hopefully this thing is clear. So we talked about storage types. We talked about transaction. We talked about example and we talked about how you can update. So you would get that object out 
modify it and then you will send it back now when you are sending it back you could say I would keep multiple version this was version 1 and whatever modifications I have done I want to store that as version 2 so that will also be possible in most of the object storage so version 1 have not having this hash v2 has that hash we can keep it and we can keep multiple objects if the need be shouldn't be an issue next thing we will discuss here is that how you access this or what protocols are used to access these type of storages block storages are accessed by protocols SCSI, fiber channels serial ata s ata as we call it you don't have to remember these i'm just giving you additional information so that you can clarify things if need be file storages are accessing network protocol smb cifs nfs you can find full form for it server message block is smb cifs is common internet file system nfs is network file system so you could clearly see that file system word is being used again and again giving you impression it is a file storage when I'm talking about a object storage, object storages would be probably accessible over HTTP, HTTPS using some calls we make. So we may not need a front end for these. These services would allow me to directly open things. Like if I want to store something in Google Drive, I could have a browser open open google drive interface in that and upload it directly and i basically i am making a http https call to get object uploaded or downloaded from it so that is a object storage last point i'll quickly talk about we already discussed this so we support metadata information only into object storages Block storages and file storages would allow you to keep operating system information or attributes of operating system or file system, but not additional metadata, which you may want to use for your own purposes. So that was a very generic discussion about block, file and object storages. We will discuss them each of each of them one by one. Let me give you a context that how AWS provide you these storage. So AWS has these storages. One of them is, sorry, block storage is category. If I talk about these are called EBS and instance store. We'll discuss about them. Then there is EFS and FSX, elastic file system, file system X. These are example of file storage services AWS offers and object storage services are referred as Amazon S3 and Amazon Glacier. S3 stands for simple storage service and that we would be discussing into the next module. So I hope everyone has a better understanding about differences in block, file and object storages. And then we will take a short break here. And afterward, we will talk about simple storage service, which is Amazon S3. Thank you. See you into the next chapter.